Hello viewers, I am Kausalya. Today we are going to solve problem number 2 under the topic designing a state model of a circuit and we are going to solve this problem by another method. So here the problem is obtain the state model of the electrical network as shown in figure by choosing V1 of t and V2 of t as state variables. So here this is the given circuit diagram and V1 of t and V2 of t are already mentioned in the problem. Right. So the first step is again we are redrawing the circuit. Right. So here this is our input voltage source. So here I had drawn it as a in the form of source. Okay. So this is our V of t. And here in this method, we are going to apply Kitcha's voltage law. So, Kitcha's voltage law is applicable only to loop, right? So, here we are having two loops, right? Loop is a closed path. That's it. So, here we are having one loop and here we are having another loop, right? Since in the problem, as they had mentioned here, as V1 of T, we are considering this as loop 1. Right, or else the normal procedure we will be taking this as loop 1 and this as loop 2. Since here the values are given as V1 of t, this is considered as loop 1 and this is loop 2. Right, so before proceeding, we are assuming the currents by ourselves. So here, let I1 is the current which flows through this R, right. And at this node, this current I1 gets divided, right. So I1 gets divided into I and I1 minus I that is you see for example consider 5 amps current flows through this resistance right and this here the current 5 amps goes and this 5 amps gets splitted into 2 right for example assume let the value of this I be 2 amps right so here it is a total of 5 amps and here we are having 2 amps so 5 minus 2 is 3 right that 3 amps will be flowing through this capacitor Right, so that is why here it is I1 and here I, so the current flowing through this capacitor is I1 minus I. Right, so that's it. Now we are going to apply KVL to the loop 1 and 2. And here we are assuming that is since the current flow is like this, we are assuming the direction of current flow is like this way. Right, and first step is here. They had clearly mentioned in the problem, right? We have to take V1 of t and V2 of t as the state variables. So here this V1 is nothing but x1 and V2 is nothing but x2, right? So these are all the state variables. So first we are applying Kitcha's voltage law to the loop 1, right? So here when you apply voltage law to the loop 1, okay? So this is our loop 1, right? So here again you see so the voltage drop across this resistor will be i into r right so this is a drop here so here it is written as minus i r right and again the voltage across this capacitor so here it is given as v1 of t right this v1 is nothing but voltage across the capacitor right and so here again plus to minus right the current flow is like this so it moves from plus to minus so here we are taking a minus sign minus v1 this v1 is nothing but voltage across this capacitor right so we had considered voltage drop across this resistor and voltage drop across this capacitor that is voltage across the capacitor and again the voltage across this capacitor also right sum of voltages in a closed loop is zero that is known as Kitcha's voltage law so here plus to minus so minus v1 and again when you move like this minus to plus right therefore it is plus v2 and here v2 is nothing but it is the voltage across this capacitor right so and the summation of all voltages will be equal to zero here and when you rearrange the terms finally we are framing an expression for i right so this is your expression for i and the next step is we are going to apply this KVL to our loop 2, right. So here again, this is our loop 2, right. And again, this is your voltage drop. So minus I1R. And here, 
the the direction is like this so plus to minus so here the voltage across this capacitor is v2 and here it is minus v2 right and again when you proceed with this here this voltage should be taken as positive because it moves from minus to plus here right so this is what i had written here minus i1 or minus v2 plus v of t is equal to 0 so here v of t is not is nothing but our input voltage so it is represented as u here right so when you rewrite minus i1 or minus v2 plus u again when you rearrange the terms we are framing an expression for our i1 right the current through the capacitor in loop 1 alone that is this is our loop 1 right so we are going to calculate the current which flows through this capacitor right so this is given by the expression so the current flowing through this capacitor is simply i so i is nothing but c into dv1 by dt this is a basic expression right v1 is the voltage across this capacitor so i is nothing but c into dv1 by dt so dv1 by dt is given as i by c right so i we had already framed the expression for i so you see i is given by v2 minus v1 by r right so here it is v2 in the place of i v2 minus v1 by r and again when you simplify we are getting expression as v2 minus v1 by rc right so we know that v1 is equal to x1 right so dv1 by dt will be equal to x1 dot right and v2 is x2 and v1 is x1 right so finally we are we are getting an expression like this that is x1 dot is equal to x2 by rc minus x1 by rc right now again we are going to calculate the current through the capacitor which lies in the common path so here this is the capacitor c which is common for loop 1 and sorry loop 1 and loop 2 so the current flowing through this capacitor is given by i1 minus i right and voltage across this capacitor is v2 so when you write it you see i1 minus i is equal to c into dv2 by dt right again dv2 by dt is given as i1 minus i by c and again we know the value of i1 as well as i right so just substitute the values over here when you substitute you see we are having an expression like this then again v2 is nothing but x2 so dv2 by dt is given as x2 dot right so x2 dot is equal to u by rc minus 2 v2 is nothing but x2 and v1 is nothing but x1 right so this is our final expression for x2 dot so here we are rewriting the sorry we are writing the expressions together so x1 dot is given by this expression and x2 dot is given by this expression so when you write it in matrix form x1 dot x2 dot forms a column matrix and here we are having x1 and x2 right so here x1 x2 forms another column matrix coefficient of x1 is minus 1 by rc x2 is plus 1 by rc and here x1 is 1 by rc and here it is minus 1 by rc right plus and in this term you see there are no u term right there is no u term here whereas here we are having an u term right therefore u forms an another matrix and here there is no term with u so it is 0 and here the coefficient of this u is 1 by rc right so this equation is known as state equation right and now we are going to frame expression for output so again when you move back to the circuit you see this is our input voltage right and the respect to output voltage is it is somewhere here right so so the output voltage is nothing but it is again v1 of t right so when you frame expression output is given by v1 of t this v1 is nothing but x1 right again when you frame expression 
This is given as y is equal to the coefficient of x1 is 1 that is no x2. So it is 0 and which is multiplied by this x1 x2 matrix right. So this is known as the output equation. So finally these two equations constitute the state model of the system right. So in both the cases in both the way of solving problems the final answer remains the same. So choose which one suits you the best right hope you people understand the concept well if you have any doubt let me know in the comment section thank you